We have a rocket that is moving at a constant speed V0 that is entering an interstellar dust cloud. The total mass of the system is given by the mass of the rocket plus the mass of the fuel. To compensate for the force of the particle colliding with the rocket, the rocket engines emit fuel at a rate given by dm by dt and that's gamma. Assuming that the dissipative force from the cloud particles takes the form f is equal to minus av squared, derive the equation of motion for the rocket. The first thing that I'm going to do just to make my life a little bit easier is that I'm going to say that the mass of the rocket plus the mass of the fuel take away the mass that's been ejected is equal to m that's going to be a function of time. The way we're going to tackle this question is by considering Newton's second law that the net force is going to equal to dp by dt. I'm going to find the change of momentum. Now let's consider our system at a small fraction of time dt. We have the rocket of mass m plus a little bit of fuel dm that is moving at a constant speed v0 in this direction. Now sometime later a small amount of fuel dm is ejected at a speed u with respect to the rocket, meaning that the rocket of mass m is going to speed up with a speed v0 plus dv. Let's find our change of momentum by considering the final momentum take away the initial one. The momentum afterwards will be given by the mass dm that is moving at a speed v0 take away u. This would now be with respect to a stationary observer because the amount of fuel dm was initially moving this way with a speed v0 but is now moving with a speed of minus u with respect to the rocket. To that we're going to add plus m and this will be multiplied by v0 plus dv and from this expression let's take away our initial momentum to figure out our change in momentum so that will be take away m plus dm multiplied by v0. Let's do some algebra so what we're going to get is that dm v0 take away dm u plus m v0 plus mdv take away mv0 take away dmv0 and that will give us now let's do some cancellation so here we have plus mv0 and minus v0 across here and here we have plus dmv0 and here the opposite of that and what we're left with is mdv take away dmu. This here is our expression for the change of momentum. We could set that equal to f multiplied by dt, so this will be f dt. Luckily for us we're given an equation for the force f in the question, so we can substitute that in and we can say that mdv take away dmu will be minus a v squared dt and because we're trying to find an equation for the acceleration I'm just going to divide both sides by dt so what we're going to get is that m dv by dt which will be our acceleration take away dm divided by dt multiply by u is equal to minus a v squared this dm by dt this is just our gamma and we can simply rewrite this as m dv by dt which is our acceleration that's going to equal gamma u remember gamma is just dm by dt take away a v squared. Remember though because m is actually given by this expression we can rewrite this equation for one final time. And there is our final equation for the motion of this rocket. Part B, what must the rocket's thrust be to maintain a constant velocity v0? Part B is actually quite easy, so in order to be moving at a constant velocity the acceleration will have to be zero. The only way this can be zero is if those two terms are equal and opposite. So 
I can just say that gamma u will have to be equal to a v squared. In other words, gamma dm by dt will be a v squared divided by u. However, gamma times u has units of a force because gamma is dm by dt. Uh, therefore, this is our thrust. So this is actually our final answer. Part C, if the rocket suddenly runs out of fuel, what is its velocity as a function of time after this point? So if the rocket runs out of fuel, there's, this term will be equal to zero. There's not going to be any mass uh, being ejected, so that's going to be equal to zero, and this here will also be equal to zero. So this means that I can rewrite the equation of motion as mr multiplied by dv by dt, and this will just be equal to minus av squared. Now, this is a differential equation that we could easily separate. So let's do this. Anything that has the variable v, I'm going to bring onto the left hand side. And what I'm going to get is that dv over v squared will be equal to minus a over mr. Those are just constants multiplied by dt. And now we can integrate both sides of this equation. So I'm going to integrate the left from v0 to some value of the speed. Let's call that vt. And then for the time, let's say that this happens at t is equal to 0 for simplicity. Then I'm going to go to some time t. So the integral of 1 over v squared is minus 1 over v. So I'm going to both integrate and multiply by minus one to get rid of this minus sign across here. What I will be getting is that one over vt take away one over v naught is equal to a over mr. And this is just a really simple integral. So this will just be multiplied by t. And now let's just do a little bit of rearranging. So one over vt will be equal to a over mr multiplied by t plus one over v naught. Now we need to do a little bit of algebra. So I'm going to say that one over vt will be equal to a t times v naught plus plus mr divided by mr v naught and now i'm just going to flip the fraction so we're going to get that vt will be equal to mr v naught divided divided by a t v naught plus mr to make it just a little bit neater we can divide both sides of the fraction by mr so what we're going to get is that vt will be equal to v naught divided by 1 mr over mr plus a over mr t v naught. And this is the equation for the speed of the rocket if it runs out of fuel. As you can probably tell, these questions are amazing fun and you need to have a look at another question from the same paper, which is great fun. This question is right over here.